Today, mammals can be divided into three groups, the monotremes who lay eggs, placentals who carry their unborn young internally and use a placenta to feed and nourish them, and marsupials. Marsupials are a diverse group of pouch-bearing mammals, consisting of some 250 living species today, and are predominantly found in Australia, with a few representatives in both North and South America. But how did this important, but very intriguing group of mammals end up on opposite sides of the Pacific Ocean? Marsupials are derived from a larger grouping termed the Metatherians and can be divided into the Australadelphia, a group mostly found in Australia and New Guinea, and the Ameridelphia, which are present in the Americas. These groupings can be further categorized by their distinctive dentition, polyprotodont, which translates to many front teeth, or diprotodont, which translates to two front teeth. Their limb type is either syndactylous, in which their toes are fused, or didactylous, where they are separate. Based on fossil evidence, the common ancestor of metatherians and in turn marsupials are believed to have had syndactylous limbs and polyprotodont dentition, resembling present-day opossums. During the Jurassic time period, about 175 million years ago, the former supercontinent of Gondwana separated from Laurasia, another very large landmass which included present-day North America. Gondwana itself began to split up even further, leading to the separation of South America from Antarctica and Australia. The breakup of Gondwana and Laurasia promoted the separation and isolation of many terrestrial flora and fauna and the various continental plates. This would have profound consequences for the origin and subsequent evolution of the marsupial group. Metatherians first evolved in North America at the end of the early Cretaceous, about 110 million years ago. About 10 million years later, true marsupials made their first appearance as part of the Cretaceous terrestrial revolution. During this interval of time, there was intense diversification of all terrestrial organisms, including the emergence of flowering plants, which opened new types of specialized niches. Fossil evidence, mostly in the form of small jawbones and isolated teeth, show that the earliest metatherians dispersed from North America, where they later went extinct, to South America, and then onto Antarctica during the late Cretaceous. They then travelled over a land bridge from Antarctica to Australia about 64 million years ago. Rising sea levels and the steady and continued drifting apart of the continents resulted in the flooding of the land bridge between these two land masses. The creation of this ocean barrier isolated Australia and triggered the independent evolution of early marsupials in both South America and Australia. Marsupials appear to have begun as nocturnal generalists during the Mesozoic. Their nighttime habits, and particularly their burrowing behaviour, would have likely restricted them to small sizes. However, these aspects of their ecology may have given them an advantage during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction some 66 million years ago, which saw the demise of the dominant non-avian dinosaurs. Mammals, including the marsupials, appear to have begun to fill many different types of ecological niches and became more specialised following this mass extinction once their main competition on land had been removed. Remarkably, despite coming from quite different points within the mammal group, several marsupials and placentals, such as the scavenging marsupial saber-tooth Thylacus smilus and the predatory placental Smilodon, began to evolve similar traits convergently due to the similarity of the ecological niches they needed to fill. These types of analogous traits are as a result of different species being put under very similar adaptive pressure. Diverse and somewhat exotic marsupials like Thylacus milus evolved in splendid isolation on the island continent of South America during the Cenozoic. All this radically changed about 3 million years ago, when a land bridge formed around Panama and the North and South American continents finally joined. This allowed the unique fauna of South America 
such as terror birds, giant ground sloths, galliptodons, and the opossum to travel north. Conversely, the placental mammal dominated fauna of North America, which included mastodons, hyrochirus, and smilodons, was able to migrate south. Collectively, this significant migratory event is termed the Great American Interchange. Remarkably, very few marsupials survive in North America today. The newly established placentals in South America dominated the ecosystems there, driving many endemic marsupials to extinction. Back in Australia, which remained an isolated continental landmass, marsupials successfully dominated various types of ecological niches due to the absence of other competing mammals. From burrowing forms, such as the marsupial mole, to apex carnivorous predators, such as the now extinct marsupial lion. The radiation of marsupials was in full swing during the Miocene. Gigantism occurred in many species in Australia. One such species is the diprotodon, commonly referred to as the giant wombat, which was a mega herbivore and one of the largest known marsupials living during the Pleistocene. Females and young possibly lived in matriarchal groups like those seen in elephants today. All in all, marsupial mammals are an excellent example of an animal group that has been sculpted and shaped through evolution, driven by the power of plate tectonics, in particular through continental drift and island isolation. Marsupials have endured for millions of years, showing the incredible adaptability of this mammalian group.